Chapter 1261, Undead Telltales, Part 1. We need to talk. Lith said as soon as the door's lock activated a hush array that would ensure their privacy. Nailed it in one. Camilla inwardly sighed. The others can wait until tomorrow, but you deserve to know the truth and to make your choice without feeling the pressure of my entire family weighing on you. Lith spoke slowly, trying to find the best way to share his real nature with her without giving her a stroke. When did it happen? Camilla asked with a pained expression. Yesterday. I didn't call you because I couldn't lie to your face and tell you that everything was all right. I wanted to speak to you in person and give you the opportunity to kick my ass if you think I'm worth your time. Lith said, Wait a minute. How can she possibly know? Did Tyrus warn her, or is this some kind of uncanny woman intuition? He actually thought, blaming his brain for moving slower than his mouth. Well, with all that happened in Kalga, I can sort of understand your circuit and stances. You were deep undercover and surrounded by enemies, yet it doesn't make it less painful. How far did you get? Camilla's face was calm, but she needed to dig her nails into her flesh to keep her emotions in check. Almost to the guardian level, but that's not the problem. Scarlet was right, I dash. Wait a minute, who is Scarlet? And what does it mean, almost to the guardian level? Did you cheat on me with Tyrus? I could understand if something happened between you and Floria since she's your ex, but Tyrus? Did she force herself on you? Camilla suddenly had no idea what they were talking about, and so did Lith. I never cheated on you with anyone. How can you even think I would do something like that? Lith didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Well, you came back with a guilty look on your face. You gave me the cold shoulder, and then you said all those things about kicking your ass. What was I supposed to think? She sighed in relief as her worries faded away. I told you countless times that you suck with opening lines. Solas had a hard time not laughing her ass off. I hope you are not going to tell her about me because I'm not ready for that. I can leave if you two have couple issues to iron out. I'm not ready either, but it will probably not be necessary. Please stay, Solas. I want you to hear my story as well. Lith replied. He made Camilla sit down on a chair while he projected with light mastery the scene of his fight outside the tower and then of his meeting with Mogur, keeping both Solus and Carl out of the story. At first, Camilla stared in awe at the image of the planet's manifestation. Even though it was just a hologram, Lith's feelings and his mastery over magic gave the Alina Mogur the imposing presence of a queen. The more she listened, the more shocked Camilla was. By the end of the projection, after seeing Litha's proto-guardian form and his demons of the flames, she had to pick up her jaw from the floor. Good gods. That's why you have death vision and why you can conjure those creepy things. You are a living nexus with the afterlife, a psychopomp. She looked around the room, almost expecting to see ghosts lurking in the room. Yes. But that's not the point. Did you miss the part where Mogur said that I'm an abomination? Some sort of undead spirit. Lith couldn't believe her reaction. No, but I don't find it that much shocking compared with the rest. Camilla said, receiving a nod of approval from Solus. Are you listening to yourself? How can you dismiss it that easily? Lith asked. It's not easy at all. But I had one year to think about it, so I have taken my decision for a long while. She replied, What do you mean, one year? I learned about it yesterday. Lith was flabbergasted. You told me about your hybrid nature and your abomination side on our first anniversary. After discovering that you are an awakened and learning how abominations are born on our second anniversary, it was kind of obvious. Especially since Alina repeated me the story about the miracle of your birth until my ears bled. Camilla shrugged. Well, yeah. It's not like we didn't have this conversation a lot in the past. I'm more surprised by the fact that you felt the need to hide it from me. Sola said, making Lith feel like a moron. Are you saying that it doesn't change anything? That you're okay with this? 
Lith shapeshifted into his hybrid form, discovering that he could now make his scales disappear and replace them with the smooth black slate of the abomination. Not really. Camilla shook her head. The hybrid form is hot, double entendre intended, whereas this thing is creepy, cold, and it doesn't have a mouth. She said while taking his face between her hands and exploring it with her fingers. Discover W story S on no slash slash E slash Lebin. Calm. There was no fear in her eyes, and the kind warmth of Camilla's touch broke down the darkness into scales again. Seriously? I've been worrying about your reaction ever since I learned being more abomination than human, and you don't even care. Litha's shock didn't stop him from instinctively rub his cheek against her palm before kissing it. Why would I? Are you going to treat me any different because of it? Do you plan of keeping me as an emergency stash of food rather than as your girlfriend? She asked with a serious tone. Of course not, but dash. Then no. I don't care. Camilla cut Lith short before he could start another of what she considered self-despised trips. I'll be honest. After you date a pervert beast abomination, hybrid capable of spewing fire for a while, it takes more than a small change in the recipe of his life forces to impress you. She pulled him down by the collar of his shirt, giving him a kiss that somehow forced him back into his human form. How crazy are you on a scale from 1 to 10? Lith looked at his body as if it had betrayed him. He had no idea how it had turned into a living shadow, nor how did Camilla pull him back. Not enough to not be upset about you seeing Mogur with your mother's appearance instead of mine. She poked at his chest with fake anger. I'm glad that you're not an egomaniac like Nalrand who sees the planet as himself, but even Morok saw it as Quilla, and they are not even dating. Did I pick the wrong ranger? He did what? That's not romantic. It's creepy as F-U-C-K. Lith blurted out in surprise. Agreed. Camilla stopped pulling his leg and gave Lith one of her dazzling smiles that could light a whole city. Is there anything else you have to tell me? Solus. Lith asked. Not now. After all the shit we lived in Kalga, we both deserve some happiness. Yet this doesn't mean I'm going to play the third wheel. I'm going to Tista's room. Good night. She stealthily slipped off his finger and warped away. Chapter 1262 Undead Telltales Part 2 No, I'm done for tonight. Yet I plan on telling the others as well, sooner or later. I could use your help, just like when I told everyone that I'm a hybrid. Do you mean your family? Camilla asked. No, I mean everyone. You are the first person I talked about the abomination issue, and I still can't believe it went so well. You must really be my lucky charm. Lith held her tight, losing himself in her warmth as Camilla returned the embrace. The first person? Are you telling me that even Tista, Thaluel, and Floria still don't know about it? She said with such happiness that it made it sound as if Lith had proposed to her. No one but you. He gave Camilla a soft kiss and didn't release her until she was out of breath. You are full of energy for someone that looked so down until a moment ago. She panted. I'm a hybrid between a beast, an abomination, and a pervert, remember? It gives me superpowers. He lay on his bed, pulling Camilla down with him. Good thing that I don't have to work tomorrow. Between having already rested during the previous day and the jet lag, Lith didn't sleep a wink even after a few hours of recreational activities. Camilla lay sound asleep beside him, with a huge smile on her face that made Lith chuckle. I'm more hungry than tired, but I feel bad at the idea of making Cammy wake up and find the bed empty. He thought while watching the sun rise from a small opening in the window in front of the bed. No matter how many magical marvels Regia had, or how comfortable the tower was. Nothing could beat sleeping in his own home beside his girlfriend. Camilla had even brought along the camellia, the magical flower that Lith had gifted her for their second date. Due to the cheap-ass components that Lith had employed to forge master it, the flower would wither and die in a week if not regularly imprinted, 
Yet Camilla prided herself of doing it daily. Good gods, did I oversleep? Camilla stood up abruptly, making him flinch. Why didn't you wake me up? I'll get late to work. She jumped off the bed, searching for her underwear that had been thrown around the room while making the scale walker armor slide over her bare skin and take the form of her constable uniform. In order. No, you didn't. And because you're on leave. Lith laughed his ass off while Camilla swore on her way back to bed like a trucker stuck in a miles-long traffic jam on a summer day. Damn army training. I'm so used to waking up early that by the time my body learns how to sleep in, my vacations are already over. Since you are already awake, do you mind if I get up and eat breakfast? I'm starving. Lith said and his stomach grumbled. That makes the two of us. She sighed. I don't want to get back to bed if it means sleeping alone. I'll come with you. Camilla had the armor take the appearance of flat shoes, black pants, and a white shirt while she imprinted the camellia. It was the first she did every day when she woke up and the last thing before going to bed. Once would have sufficed, but she liked to stay on the safe side. After a hearty breakfast and retrieving solace, Lith and Camilla went to Protector's home. Thanks to their shared life force, the Re was the only person besides Solus to know about Litha's reincarnations. Lith felt the need of sharing with both of them his burden about the final meeting with Carl. Glad to have you back. You are right on time for breakfast. Celia Fastero opened the door welcoming her guests with a warm smile. She was a woman in her late thirties, yet thanks to Protector's treatments, she looked barely past her mid-twenties. She was about 1.7 meters, 5 feet 7 inches tall, with skin tanned from the years of long exposure to the sun. Her shoulder-length black hair gave her sharp hazel eyes a gentler look. She wore a set of comfortable house clothes comprised of loose brown pants and a black blouse. Thank you, Celia, but we have already eaten. Camilla hugged the older woman who had become one of her closest friends over time. The Verhen and Fastero families shared a lot of secrets that couldn't be leaked, making them only grow closer. And I'm not offering you food. I'm asking your help. Ever since he returned from the fringe, Nauren spends more time at Faluels than at home, and I could use a hand with the kids. Celia exploited the hub to drag Camilla inside and hand her the youngest member of the family, Fenrir Fastero. The baby was now one year old and quite heavy. New estirize at n slash bell slash b slash i slash and co. Thanks a lot. Celia said before Camilla could even think about a proper answer to such an abuse of the rules of hospitality. You have no idea how much it means to me eating in peace without worrying about that little imp regurgitating her food on my clothes. Celia had three children, all of them were human-emperor-beast hybrids with the energy typical of small kids and the destructive power of an improvised explosive device. In her attempts to escape, Fenrir shapeshifted her small hands and feet into claws that would have ripped Camilla's clothes to shreds if not for her actually wearing an enchanted armor. This is not really my idea of a courtesy visit. Camilla snarled at Celia while trying to submit the insanely strong child and make her eat a creamy soup. You'll thank me when you have a few of your own. Celia's words made her blush, ending the argument. What the heck are you looking at me that way? Celia scolded Protector. If you made me clothes like the Skinwalker armor, or if at least you helped me more with the children, I wouldn't have to resort to such petty tricks. Or a calc. You'd... M and magic crystals don't grow on trees, Ryman said with an apologetic tone. On top of that, I'm doing everything I can, but between making the money necessary for our two houses and practicing magic, I don't have much time left even though I sleep just once a week. See what I mean? Celia turned to Camilla again before resuming the quarrel that lasted for the whole breakfast. Do you mind keeping Celia busy for a while? I would like to talk alone with Protector and tell him about my situation. Lith asked via the mind link while entertaining Lilia and Laren with his stories until they finished eating. No problem. 
Camilla replied, glad of the armor's self-cleaning properties. Half of the cream soup had ended up on her clothes, but the stains disappeared as fast as they formed thanks to small bursts of darkness magic. Once the kids bolted outside to play with their magical pets, slash and crash, silence finally befell the house. That was intense. Lith said the moment after Celia and Camilla went out hunting. Does it happen often? Almost every day, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Ryman said while stopping Fenrir from clawing her way up to the ceiling. He had repaired the walls so often that he had become a professional carpenter. Chapter 1263, Family Business, Part 1. Besides, Celia is right. Hybrid children are too much to handle for a human without the proper tools, and I'm often absent. Don't make my same mistakes and don't lose so much. Children only have one first time at everything and I've missed most of it. He sighed. Lith didn't like talking about such things. After an awkward pause, he told both Solus and Protector the full story about his meeting with Mogur. The F-U-C-K? Solus was flabbergasted. This is way more important than you being an abomination. Why didn't you tell me sooner? I strongly disagree. Lith replied. As for your question, I knew how you felt after discovering how much death your legacy had caused and I can't even imagine the pain you experienced from losing your body a few hours after getting it. Discover EU chapters at Novel by. Co. Adding my burden to your own would have just been cruel. I already felt bad for what I did to Kalia and for making you witness her fate. I couldn't risk giving you more scars. You should have told me. Sola sighed, but as the memories of the magical lobotomy flashed in front of her eyes, she was glad he didn't. Do you feel guilty about that merfolk? Protector's voice sounded genuinely worried. No matter what Lith told him, the skull wouldn't judge him for it. No, but I'm not proud of my actions either, and that's a first. I'm used to collateral damage. I'm aware that after Arryn's plan failed, making Solus follow Kalia was our only shot at uncovering the secrets of Kalga, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Because of me, Kalia will be remembered as a hero, yet I know she died a dog's death. I honestly don't know how Carl managed to forgive me so easily, nor why did he still care so much about me. Lith said, because he loves you, and because as long as you realize the weight of your actions, you'll never truly be an abomination. Having no feelings doesn't make you strong. It makes you empty. You should have learned at this point that protecting is much more difficult than killing, but the perks are also way better. Ryman smiled while lifting Fenrir in the air with his huge hands. Dada. The baby girl said while giggling. What do you mean? Either you are an abomination or you aren't. There is no middle ground. Lith replied, Indeed, yet you seem to have failed to grasp the definition of abomination. Do you remember what I told him before we faced the wither? He asked, Yes. You call them abominations not because of what they do, but because of what they are. Exactly. Protector nodded. What do you think that means? that abominations are ruthless predators enslaved to their hunger. Lith replied, Wrong. Humans kill all kinds of living beings for sport or need, yet they didn't earn such a title. Despite the fact that they consider all other races as prey, not even monsters and undead are called that way. Protector pointed out, Okay, you lost me. What's the big difference then? As I see it, Abominations and undead are almost the same thing. Lith sighed. Wrong again. There's a reason why Mogur gave up on a single species, and that's because abominations subvert the natural order of things. They can't reproduce. They destroy rather than enrich their environment. And more importantly, their very first act is to prey on their own kin. Just like the wither we faced years ago slaughtered most of the BYK clan, Every abomination sacrifices those who they held dearest first before plaguing the rest of Mogur. Even monsters and undead aren't so destructive. 
They value their existence and strive to live it to their fullest. Abominations, instead, have no life at all. You can consider them as points fixed in time, incapable of moving either forward or backward. You are not an abomination because you built rather than destroy. Because you protected your pack when you could have easily sacrificed them in exchange for greater power. You are still grief-stricken from your past, but you're not fixed in time. You've come a long way since we first met in the woods, when you were still a murderous kid incapable of trusting anyone. You even renounced to part of your life so that I could have one. Protector handed Fenrir to him, which Lith promptly took in his arms with the gentlest touch he was capable of. I may have fathered my children, but in a way, they are also yours. Your life force flows through my veins as well as in my kids. I believe that there's a reason why Mogur bestowed upon you a bloodline so strong that it can keep the abyss inside of you at bay. Protector weaved together two chore magic spells, making them take the form of a shadow demon and a fire beast coiling around each other in an eternal struggle for dominance. If what Mogur has said is true and your human life force is nothing but an echo of the flesh your soul wears, then which one of the two sides your real life force is made of will win? The one I feed. Lith replied, Indeed. You should stop letting others define what you are. Is it my human appearance that makes me a father or the fact that I care about my family with all of my heart? Actions speak louder than any pretentious word. If anyone dares to doubt my love for my wife just because I'm an emperor beast, it's their problem, not mine. Protector stood up, gesturing Lith to follow him. If there's something you should be ashamed of, is not how you came to this world, but what you did with that time. Do you realize that I achieved the Blue Core when you still went to the Academy, yet you surpassed me in a few years? Even now that I've finally refined my core to bright blue, you're already half-step into violet. Stop running and take your time to appreciate what you have. We both know that there's no telling when the things we take for granted will be taken away from us. Lith spent the rest of the morning playing with the children of the Verhen, Fastero, and Yeval households while mulling over Protector's words. He had missed both his little brother Aaron and his niece Lyria, who were now over five years old. It seems like the day before yesterday, when I held them between my arms, and yesterday, when they had trouble using the bathroom. I really missed a lot. Lith sighed. Aaron had developed a pitch-black streak amid his light brown hair, while Lyria had her blonde hair streaked silver and red all over. They were both smart enough to have already learned to read, write, and count. The males in our family never got any elemental streak. Did my birth some way affect my entire bloodline? Could it be that to give me my beast side Mogur had to change my relatives as well? Lith thought, keep it up like that and I'll make you a tinfoil hat. Solas laughed. After talking with Protector, her mood had slightly improved. She also considered the Skull as her true friend and confidant. Chapter 1264, Family Business, Part 2 Laugh all you want, but I don't remember children their age having a bright yellow mana core. I'd better teach them some magic before someone gets hurt. The only sour note was Zinya acting distant and awkward with him as if she was depressed about something. Camilla had spent the morning in the Tron Woods with Celia, hunting. Even though she had no previous experience, all the magical training with Journey allowed her to move even more stealthily than the Huntress, who promised herself for the umpteenth time to learn magic. Thanks a lot. I'm a bit disappointed we didn't get to talk much, but hunting helped me vent a lot of stress. Don't be silly. I should be the one to thank you. I finally got some me time, great company, and all the prey we got. On the other hand, I'm going to kill Ryman for not crafting me any of your trinkets. The fact that a complete beginner had caught more game than her thanks to the gap in their equipment mildly pissed Celia off. The silver lining was that Camilla already had a day job and had gifted Celia everything she had shot down with her wands. Before lunch, while the kids were taking a bath to get rid of the mud and sweat ACCU, Mulat during their games, 
Lith showed the rest of the family the images of his latest world tribulation, glossing over the conversation with Moger entirely. He needed to tell them something to explain why he had been so dejected the previous day, but he decided to follow Protector's advice and take his time instead of ruining their happiness and his own. I understand that sharing the pain of those wretched souls must have been hard on you, but this is actually good news. Raz said, If you are right, then you're just one tribulation away from becoming a guardian. Cracked life force or not, you won't have to die unless you decide otherwise. First, there's no telling when or if a tribulation will take place. I didn't have one in years and wouldn't have undergone this tribulation either if not for Lee Gaines setting me up. Lith said, Farming lizard. Should have minded his own farming business. Alina swore in a family-friendly language because of the kids. Second, the idea of outliving everyone, Tisto included, is depressing. Lith said, Nonsense. Becoming a guardian seems like a job like any other. When you get tired of it, you can always quit, but I forbid you to die before I do. Alina sniffled. Okay, that's enough. Lith said at his family's odd reaction to the retelling of the tribulation. Without the part about Solus, Carl, and Moger, my story is more epic than sad. On top of that, neither mom nor dad ever wanted me to become a guardian. They should be worried as always, not relieved. He thought. First, Zinnia gave me the cold shoulder this morning, and now Mom cries for a mission that's comical if compared to Kula or Balkiai. What's going on here? Lith looked around the room, noticing embarrassed gazes. Tista and Solus didn't miss how no one dared meet the eyes of the just-returned siblings. Either you tell him or I will. Camilla's voice, while she talked to Alina, sounded livid like Lith had never heard her before. You wanted time and I gave you time, but I'm not going to keep this any longer. You heard how much they've gone through during those last few days. You have seen how badly hurt they returned from those horrors. We agreed on taking things slowly. Alina became pale now that Lith and Tista stared at her with suspicion. No, we didn't agree on anything. You decided and I went along with it only because I didn't want them to rush home and ruin their mission. Now they are here and deserve to know. Camilla didn't like meddling with the family business, but she liked keeping secrets from Lith even less. Especially after all the lengths he had gone to be honest with her, like during the previous night. To add insult to injury, it was partly her business as well. Is this about your parents? Lith asked. It would explain why Camilla is so angry and why Zinnia is so embarrassed, but not why mom acts so weird. He thought. No. Alina said. Yes. Camilla stood up in outrage at the blatant lie. Your parents didn't kick mine out of Lusha even after knowing the truth. Even worse, Alina invited them here to meet you. What? Lith almost choked on his food. How could you do that? They are farming gold diggers that are clearly after our money. How could you say that in front of Camilla? They are her family. Alina stood up as well, incapable to believe that her son could be so rude to his girlfriend. He can say it any time he wants because it's the truth. They are F, farming gold diggers that are clearly after your money. Camilla had still some trouble adapting her speech in front of children. What the heck are they talking about? Tista had never heard anything about Camilla's parents, so the matter confused her quite a bit. Based on Lil Bros and Camilla's reaction, those guys must be bad news. Yet, I don't know enough about them to take my stand without hurting Mom's feelings too much. She and Zinnia have become very close, so I can understand them taking the same side. They have apologized so many times to both you and Zinnia. What could you ask more of them? Alina spoke with so much fervor and seemed to be willing to put on the line for a pair of strangers so much that it made Lith doubt her sanity. I could ask them to keep ignoring me and Zinnia, as they did during the last ten years, instead of barging in the moment money is involved. Camilla replied, 
Mom, Cammy is right. They are no different from our own relatives that remembered about our existence only after the news of my silver mines came out. What makes Camilla's parents deserve a different treatment from them? Lith asked. A lot of things. Alina sniffled again and Raz rushed to her side, holding her tight in the attempt to calm her down. They are just concerned parents trying to make up for the mistakes of the past before it's too late. Everyone deserves a second chance. No, they don't, and your argument doesn't make sense. The strain from remaining calm to not further upset his mother gave Lith a headache, but not one strong enough to make him fail to notice that there was more to it. What are you still hiding from me? His eyes moved around the room, finally able to notice the grief in everyone's face that the pain from his own problems had clouded until that moment. Raz, Alina, and even Rina had the same sad light in their eyes they had back when Tista was very ill. Explore Tati's stories at no slash l forward slash forward slash bin. CM. Tryon is dead. Alina said after a long moment of silence. Camilla looked down with sadness while Tista became pale and Lith had a hard time not saying, try and who, with a shrug. Chapter 1265, Black Sheep, Part 1 Tryon took his own life months ago, yet we learned it only recently because after disowning us, he had no family. In his farewell letter, he wrote that he regretted not being brave enough to admit his mistakes and ask our forgiveness. Tryon was my baby. Yet, he spent his life alone because he thought that we didn't love him enough to give him a second chance. He preferred to die rather than being rejected again by his family. Alina burst into tears. He lived as he died. As an annoying pain in the ESS, Lith remained unfazed by the news. Yet, he kept those thoughts to himself. Raza's eyes were watery and Rina seemed to have lots of regrets as well. Spitting his venom on their feelings would have been both pointless and cruel. If Trine disowned us, how did you learn about his death? Lith asked. The army would have informed me first and so would have done Journey if she had been called to investigate the case. My family has no contacts with either the Mage Association or the military and they would rather keep it a secret to curry my favor than get on my bad side by hurting my mother for nothing. He actually thought. Tryon never stopped keeping in touch with Orpal, using him as an emergency contact in case something happened. It took the army a while to find Orpal and notify him of Tryon's death. Then dash. Orpal is back. Tista jumped on her feet, yelling at the top of her lungs. Her reaction had been so fast that she had cut Alina short and beat Lith to the punch. She immediately activated life vision, scouting the vicinity of the house for her long-lost yet never-missed sibling. Calm down, he's not here anymore, Raz said. He left right after sharing Tryon's fate with us and asking our forgiveness. Are you insane? Litha's voice was calm and low, yet it held the fury of a storm. He stood up slowly to not flip the table in his wrath and kept his eyes closed to not unleash upon his family the killing intent that now flooded his body. Orpal, or Meln, as he should call himself right now after losing his name, comes back here and instead of releasing the magical beasts you let him inside my house. Our house and he is still my baby. Alina held Raza's hand while her brain and her bleeding mother's heart battled fiercely. I have already lost a son. How can you ask me to give up on another? He's turned over a new leaf. The old Orpal would have never apologized. It doesn't answer my question. Litha's voice turned coarse in anger. Don't you find it oddly convenient that Tryon left such a note and that Melm came here during my absence? I'm officially unemployed, very few people know about my apprenticeship and almost no one about my trip to Giera. You're just paranoid. Orpal Dash Alina attempted to say. Meln. His name is Meln and he is not a Verhen. I'd rather give up on my family name than share it with him. Lith released a violet pulse that shone through his closed eyes, filling the house with dread. 
Rena's triplets started to cry, while Aaron and Lyria looked at their uncle as if they saw him for the first time. To their childish eyes, he looked terrible but cool, like a character from the fairy tales he told them. There's only so much mana I can keep down, Solas said. Is it Malmworth scaring your family? Solas, I'm not paranoid. Not this time. I arranged things for this contingency years ago with Lark, remember? Orpal can't have such a fine timing and the necessary luck to escape the Count's network of informants. By my mom, you're right. You put an APB on him before leaving for the Academy. Now that you're an Archmage, no guard would turn a blind eye to it, not when they can make you such a favor. The shock allowed her to shrug off the lingering sadness from losing her humanity that still clouded her mind. I know that your grudge runs deep, Raz said. Get latest of all CHPers on NV, E, LBJ slash N, C slash M. That's why we didn't give him any reply and waited for your return. This is a matter that requires a unanimous decision from the family. I can understand your anger, especially after all you've gone through. That's why we didn't mention it to you. He looked at Camilla, giving her a nod as a silent thank you. She had done what he couldn't do to his conflicting responsibilities as Litha's father and Alina's husband. Orpal, I mean, Mound seems to have truly changed, Lith. Rena said, trying to hold back her tears. I'll never forget all the bad things that he did and said, but maybe it's time to forgive him. He's still my twin brother, and I can't bear the thought of him ending up dead in an alley like Tryon. I'm sorry, but I don't care. Lith cursed his brain for its lack of tact before realizing that it was Tista speaking. Tryon abandoned us long before he had the gall to disown this family because having magically talented siblings hurt his ego. He never bothered keeping in touch with any of us, not even with mom who worried for him every day and yet he dared to put Watch's name as his emergency contact. Do I need to remind you that Watch's name didn't get disowned for stealing bread but because he tried to kill Lith in cold blood? Those words opened old wounds that not even the passing of a decade had healed. Alina clenched her CHESD, knowing they were true and yet wishing they were just a lie. Tryon did everything on his own, without caring for us once in his whole life. If he did, he wouldn't have committed suicide, let alone leaving a note that was bound to make you feel guilty. I'm sorry, but I stopped considering him my brother when he missed Rena's wedding, when he didn't come for my graduation, when he didn't bother replying to a single letter of the many that mom wrote him. As for what's his name? Tista was too angry to remember the new name and refused to use the old one. Coming back like that proves that he hasn't changed one bit. He's still an opportunistic jerk that uses his own brother's death to crawl his way back into a now-rich family and get the share of money that he surely thinks he's entitled to. Tista's face was red while her hands were white from clenching them hard. Her whole body trembled in outrage as her mana almost went wild, releasing cyan pulses with every breath she took. What she said, Lith said while pointing at Tista. By taking most of his words out of his mind, she had allowed him to calm down enough to finally manage to open his eyes without destroying the house. Tryon's death upsets me only because it hurts you guys. Death doesn't change the past nor does it make him into a better person. My only question is if Meln has planned or not his return with the help of Camilla's parents. Chapter 1266, Black Sheep, Part 2 How can you say that? Is everything a conspiracy to you? Raz said, moving his eyes from Lith to Alina. His wife was so pale and looked so weak that she could faint at any moment. Alina had never hoped that such deep wounds would get patched up easily, but she didn't expect from her children such a firm rejection either. Good gods, you're right. Camilla felt her knees getting weak and searched for Litha's hand. They could have researched your family history and kept tabs on your lost brothers. I wouldn't be surprised if they're pulling Meln's strings and writing his sob story to get what they want. It makes much more sense now. Camilla, 
How can you say that? They are your parents. Alina said amid tears. I can say that exactly, because they are my parents. They used me for 16 years and threw me away the moment they didn't need me anymore. I'm not going to let them ruin my life again. They never looked for me except when they needed something and I don't see why this time it should be any different. Camilla's rage and Litha's hand had given her the strength to stand up again. What followed was as ugly as only a family argument can be, ruining the lunch and everyone's mood. Neither side needed to throw mean words because their respective positions were so irreconcilable that anything they said stung at the other like a blade. Raz and Alina mourned their lost child. Their pain made them incapable of understanding how Lith and Tista could shrug off not one, but two members of their family. The two siblings, in turn, couldn't forgive their parents for being so inconsiderate. They had not only let someone Lith and Tista deeply despised inside their house, but even wanted to bring him back into their lives. Rena was caught in the middle of the two factions. The relationship between the twins ran deep. She and Orpal had lots of memories together, be they about taking care of their siblings or of the farm. Also, Rena had never truly given up on Tryon, always hoping that one day he would come to his senses. She knew him as prideful and hard-headed, but he had never been a bad person. Tryon's loss left a hole in her heart that Rena wished that her twin would fill, yet she knew him best and didn't trust Orpal near any of her children. Lith and Tista are right, but they must also realize that mom is not an awakened. Their longevity makes them plan in the long term, but for the rest of us, death will come before they get a single gray hair. As a mother, I understand that she wants to see her children settle down and enjoy her grandchildren while she has still the strength to do it. Orpal represents mom's opportunity to make up for the mistakes that she thinks she made with Tryon and to bring the family back together. Rena thought, once both sides gave up on changing the mind of the other, Lith dragged Camilla and Tista inside his room. He briefly explained to them his agreements with Count Lark in the case Orpal slash Meln returned to Lusha while calling the Lord of the Aluestria County. Did you really plan to get him captured and killed? Tista hated Orpal, but that was too much, even for her. Only if he came back with a revenge in mind. I expected Orpal to try something stupid, like he always did. Yet after I enrolled in the White Griffin and he finished his military service, Orpal just disappeared. I thought that the gap between us had become too big for his ego to bear or that maybe he knew about the Queen's Corps protecting our house. Either way, it seems I was wrong. Lith replied, Lith, it's so good to hear from you. Count Lark's hologram said, Please, just tell me that for once you are giving me a courtesy call. I'm a bit tired of hearing from you only when you need something from me. Despite the seriousness of the situation, the nobleman's words struck a nerve. Seeing Lith flinch in embarrassment made both women chuckle. Reedy the latest stories and Enovielbend. Calm. Count Traquil Lark hadn't changed much since the last time Lith had seen him in person. He was a man in his late fifties, around 1.83 meters, six foot, tall with a thin build that made him appear even taller. The Count had thick black hair and a short-trimmed goatee with streaks of gray. His inseparable black-rimmed monocle was attached to his B.R.E.S.D. pocket with a blue silk string. He held a glass of whiskey in one hand while he used the other to set the amulet so that he could see all of his surprise guests. Tista, you grow more beautiful with each passing year. You are a sight from sore eyes and a scourge to the county's postal service. I have filled a barn with the letters addressed to you since the last time you bothered to pick them up. I'm very sorry, dear Count. Tista gave him a curtsy. Unlike my communication rune, my address is public and I can't deal with the craziness of people who propose to me after having seen me once during some public ceremony. Constable Yeval, your charming smile never ceases to amaze me. I hope you'll forgive the curiosity of an old coot. 
How can an officer as skilled as you have so much trouble turning a single scoundrel archmage into an honest man? Lark asked, making Lith blush. I'm sorry, but this is no courtesy call. Lith cut him short, having no DSIRE to hear what his old friend had to say about him. Melm is back and he's not alone. The Count spat out his drink, making his hologram disappear for a second, as his monocle jumped out of his eye orbit from surprise. Lith reported everything he had learned from his parents, just a few minutes ago. Both the news of Tryon's death and the possible involvement of Camilla's parents made Lark spat out more of the whiskey that he tried to drink to calm down and made his monocle jump around like a cricket. I'd better put this down or my butler, Poultice, will glare at me for days. Lark said while finally putting his glass down after wasting a good half a bottle of liquor. He had taken just a few sips, but there was so much alcohol in the air that it made him tipsy. Here's what I know. I never revoked the order I gave before you got admitted to the White Griffin and with all the security, due to the undead threat, I find it unlikely he managed to reach Lisha unnoticed without someone helping him. He looked at Camilla with an apologetic expression on his face. Do you know anything about what he did after leaving the army? Lith asked. No. My influence ends at Eluestrius borders. I asked my neighbors to keep an eye for him as well, but they either deceived me or Melm stayed away from the Distar Marquette. I can ask Lady Distar if you want, but I'd say that the answer to your problems is closer than you think. Unlike nobles, the power of constables is not limited by their territory. Lark gave Camilla a respectful bow. Chapter 1267, Copycat, Part 1 Let the Martianists know of my situation. Lith had never forgotten about Lady Distar's barrette that shielded her magical talent from detection. According to Orion, cloaking devices were a state secret that couldn't be given out without the permission of the royals. Martianus Distar was supposed to be just a medium-rank noble, yet she had won and even pretended to not have magical powers. Lith didn't know that she actually was the Lord Commander of the Queen's Corps and a personal friend of the Queen, but during his time at the Academy, he had understood that her role in the kingdom wasn't as simple as it appeared. Cammy, the Count is right. Can you dig up information about Melm, Orpol, or whatever name he uses now? Lith asked. I can, but not from here and not now. I'm on leave, and to access the constable network while not being part of any investigation would raise a flag in the system. She replied. There's no rush. Lark dismissed the issue with a wave of his hand. Now that Lith is here, I doubt Melm will dare show his face. Even if he does, I'm certain that digging for information or for a grave will be equally easy. The nobleman's steel gaze and Litha's nod in reply told the two women that they weren't joking. How are you faring, dear Lark? Lith tried to lighten the mood after noticing the shocked expression of his companions. Retirement is good. You should give it a try. My children have grown into fine administrators and their counties are thriving while I'm free to spoil my grandkids. Lark moved the communication amulet to show them a series of family paintings depicting five happy-looking children of different ages. Among his many hobbies, Lark had a knack for painting. I'm glad to see that the Lark bloodline is safe. Lith said with a smile while remembering about his short stay at the Count's manor as a child. Maybe and maybe not. Lark chuckled and showed Lith a small piece of paper that he used as a bookmark. It had a single word written on it, past. What the heck? This isn't a joking matter. That's Balkier's warning. Its sight sent a cold shiver down Tista's spine. Ilium Balkier, the god of death, was the bogeyman who had terrorized the Griffin kingdom for eleven years. He had single-handedly put the whole country on its knees by slaughtering the upper echelons of the most important institutions every year on the anniversary of the death of his family. No, it's not. Lark shook his head. A lot of maniacs use bulkier signature card to play stupid pranks or send death threats. I sent it to the Balkia department 
just to be sure, and they confirmed my suspicions. The paper is wrong. The ink is wrong. The handwriting is wrong. I mean, why would Balkir resent me? I'm no one, and he didn't live in Eleustria. This is just the sick joke of some psycho. Let's hope you are right. Lith didn't feel as calm as the Count. The only time he had faced Balkir's undead army, he had almost lost protector and his life force had been crippled as a result. Soon there will be a royal gala for reasons that I cannot disclose as of yet, but I would like to bring both you and the Martianess as my guests. It will be my Pelesuari. Lark nodded. My heart hopes it's about your engagement announcement, but cold logic dictates it must be about another one of your insane achievements. Lark had noticed how the others didn't find the fake Balkia note as funny as he did so he rushed to a more embarrassing topic to lighten the mood. The Count asked the three of them a lot of personal questions until Balkia was the last thing on their mind. Meanwhile, a similar conversation on a completely different tone took place on one of the Griffin Kingdom's safest channels. Find new Tories on nov slash el bend com. Who else did get one? Martianus Miram Distar held a piece of paper identical to the one Lark had received between her index and medium finger. In the White Griffin, we got four. Me, Vaster, Manoher, and Wainmeyer. Headmaster Duke Marth said while showing four cards on his desk. My husband and I got one each as well. Whoever this is, they got guts. They didn't come through the regular mail. I found them in my bedroom. Archon Journey Ernest said. What's your conclusion? Queen Silpha asked Paziol Vinter, one of the leading figures in the Balkia department. He was a man in his mid-twenties with black hair and brown eyes. Three long and thin scars ran from his jaw to his neck. They were the marks left by Balkir's valors during his attack on the six great academies seven years back. Like many students who had survived, Paziol had decided to keep his scars to never forget and never forgive the blood magus. This is not Balkia, but a crafty copycat. His face was cold, but a burning rage lit his eyes. The M.O., the delivery mode, and even the timing of the notice doesn't match. Whoever it is, they have the resources to get to the fake info we use as bait to find corrupt high-level clerks, but no actual knowledge of how Balkia moved. There's no way to know if it's another necromancer, a terrorist, or just an idiot until the day of the anniversary. I'd like to take charge of the investigation and of punishing the culprit. Denied. Archon Ernas replied, I didn't find anything and I doubt you can do any better. One wrong move and we risk alerting our enemy of how seriously we're taking their threat. The ego of someone who tries to steal Balkir's spotlight can't afford to be ignored. We'll make our preparations in silence and let them come to us. But dash, I agree with Archon Ernas. The queen cut Paziol short and ended the debate. Any idea what the endgame of our enemy might be, Spellbreaker Paziol? Aside from the obvious answer, none. Those who have received the threats have only one thing in common. They all helped Archmage Verhen in the past. He said, After the meeting ended, Journey took a magically sealed box out of her dimensional amulet. The complex cloaking spells engraved on its surface made it invisible to both mystical and physical means of detection. Not even a royal forge master could find it. Only the one who had imprinted it could perceive the box. Once opened, it revealed to contain an odd-looking communication amulet made of orichalc, but M instead that of silver, and with a violet mana crystal fueling it. Do you know anything about this story? Journey asked after repeating everything she had just learned. Only that it wasn't me and that I don't care for copycats. Yet if they dare to desecrate the death of my family to try and turn my legacy for their gains, I'll make sure that's the last mistake they ever make. Ilium Balkia had no love left for the Griffin Kingdom, yet he couldn't stand idly while everything he had worked hard for, to the point of sacrificing most of his life force, was twisted beyond recognition.
Chapter 1268, Copycat, Part 2 Journey let the god of death rant while she checked on Minoher's position. She already had two gods dancing on the palm of her hand and Journey was eager to discover if she could get a third. Litha's house, village of Lusha, a few hours later. We are about to have some tea, dear. Would you mind joining us? Alina asked after knocking on Litha's door. Thanks, Mom. We'll be there in a minute. Tista replied while hugging her mother. No matter how angry they got at each other, it wouldn't last long. Alina loved her children too much to hold a grudge for more than a few minutes. I'm sorry for earlier, Alina said while returning the embrace. Between Orpal's death, your brother almost dying again, and hearing how much you suffered, I wasn't thinking clearly. Gods, why did all of this have to happen at the same time? Tista would have liked to say that Orpal was bad news in more than one way, but it would have achieved nothing but hurt her mother more. I'm sorry too, Mom. I shouldn't have said all those things. She actually said, Don't think for a moment that I've forgotten about all the bad things that your brother has ever said and done to you. Alina let go of Tista and took Litha's face between her hands. I haven't forgiven him either. Pretty words are cheap. Yet if he really is changed, then he deserves to be at least part of my life if you don't want him in yours. Are you willing to help your stupid mom to make sure it's not all an act? First, you're not stupid, mom. You're just too kind for your own good. Lith didn't have a shred of resentment toward her. There was a reason why Mogur took her semblance in front of him. If not for Alina, Lith would have never cared about anyone but himself. Her unconditional love had quelled the abyss inside of him back when he was trapped inside his infant body and kept his fury at bay until he had met Solus. Top VL updates on n slash o slash v slash lb slash and com. Even after learning that Lith was a hybrid and maybe not even her son, Alina had been the first member of the family to accept him. Second, you don't even have to ask. I'll help you to the best of my abilities, but you have to promise me that you'll keep an open and clear mind. The truth is pointless to those who refuse to see it. I promise. Alina hugged him, making sure once again that he wasn't hurt in any way. The rest of the day passed uneventfully. After an awkward start, the mood of the Verhen family returned to normal. Later, that evening, Lith informed Vastu of the threat that Zinnia's parents posed to her and asked Camilla to thoroughly investigate Orpal. He also contacted his friends and arranged a meeting for the following day at Solus's tower. They met at dawn since both parties had many things to say and knowledge to share. Quilla went first, sharing the events inside the fringe, what they had learned about how to communicate with Mogur, and the new magic they had learned. Freya had become a gravity mage while Quilla had become the first human true mage and even dabbled in light mastery now. Seriously? Elves? Solus couldn't believe her own ears. Aside from the golden skin and the shitty attitude, they look like those in Dundash. She pointed at Quilla's hologram until Litha's glare cut her short. I mean, what a bunch of assholes. Before anyone could wonder what she meant, Lith told them everything that had happened in Regia first and then in Kalga, leaving out only the part about Carl. Listening to the fate of the humans in Giera, to the fight against the puppeteer abomination, and to Kalia's fate was an emotional roller coaster that peaked when Solus used the tower's abilities to make a hologram of her real appearance overlap with her energy body. This is how I'm supposed to look like, she said while dispelling the illusion. There was no joy in her voice, only sadness. Yet their ride derailed when Lith told them the truth about himself, and an awkward silence fell in the tower's main hall. That's what you couldn't tell me in Regia? Floria was flabbergasted. It all made sense to her now. She had actually guessed it from the moment she had learned about how Awaken turned into abominations, but she had always denied the possibility that Lith wasn't really human. Yes, I didn't tell Solus either. 
She already had too much on her plate, and Camilla deserved to be the first to know about my latest crazy shit for once. I owed her that much. Lith said, Are you two still together? Quilla asked in reflex, while trying to calm the storm that raged inside her head. Even though I have a hard time believing it myself, we are. She said that between my abomination side and my brief death at birth, she had already guessed, yet she doesn't care about it. Litha's words made everyone's eyes but Floria's go wide in surprise. After the initial shock, it was the same thing that she would have told him if he decided to share that news with her first. Except he didn't, and it really hurt. After talking with Solus and Protector, I don't care about it either. He is right. What I am doesn't change who I am or the way I love my family. Later I'm going to inform Faluel as well, but I wanted to tell you guys first. I'll understand if you want to have nothing to do with me anymore, but I have to ask you to keep it for yourself. My life is already messy as it is, and I don't need more trouble. Lith left the room to not be the proverbial elephant in the room while they decided what to do. You didn't have to tell them right now, you know? Solus's wisp rested on his shoulder. After experiencing her human body, she could barely stand her energy form. Everything she saw, felt, and heard was now a pale imitation of the real thing as if a thin veil of cotton was spread over her body and dulled her senses. Yeah, but I don't want to keep lying. I have no need for fair-weather friends and they need to know the risks in the case I lose it. As Protector said, the first thing a real abomination do is killing all those closest to them. Lith Sears said her gently, feeling her sadness as his own. The door opened barely a second after he had left, letting out Naurand and Floria. You have yet to tell me what you did with the hands of Minadion and with the white crystal. I'm no forge master, but they are both priceless treasures that could help fix the problem with my two sides. The Rizar said, leaving Lith flabbergasted. Don't be so surprised. Ever since we met, I've never considered you a human. Humans don't shapeshift, nor do they turn into frigging giants. I always knew you were a monster, so giving it a tag changes little. Protector trusts you, and Mogur considers you as one of her children. That's more than enough for me. Naurin shrugged. Chapter 1269, Solus's True Power, Part 1. I'd like to see the white crystal as well. Even though my household is rich, Dad isn't allowed to bring them home or to use them for anything outside his royal forge mastering lab. Floria said, not adding a single word about accepting so easily with being an abomination, no matter how long he stared at her. He brought them to the second underground floor, where the crystal mines were located. The Eye of Kalga had taken deep roots that spread throughout the tower walls, connecting it to all the other crystals. What the heck is it doing? Naurand asked after noticing that wherever the white veins touched, the color of the lesser crystals turned brighter. My guess is that since there's nothing past white and that, due to the crystal being already cut, it cannot grow further, the Eye of Kalga uses the energy from the tower to overcome its natural limits. Solus replied, Can you please dumb it down for me? Naurin said, It's rearranging the crystal lattice of lesser gemstones to match its own. Solus replied, Okay, now pretend I'm ten years old and explain it again. Naurin scratched his head in embarrassment. It's giving a special embrace to the other crystals that accelerates their growth and helps them to absorb the world energy more easily. Solus chuckled. It's beautiful. Floria placed her hand on the crystal and used invigoration to study it. Did you try adding the adamant we received from Zoth? Based on what Tista learned, the process that makes crystal grow applies to enchanted metals as well. The Eye of Kalga didn't look to invigoration like a piece of stone with a mana core, but as an awakened mana core the size of an ADULT man. It rhythmically drew in the world energy as if it breathed, splitting it into the six elements before reassembling it again and sending it through the white veins. Floria could almost feel the crystal wailing as it searched for a suitable body. I did, 
But if the tower has a metal mine as well, it's on another floor. Lith sighed. Is it alive? Floria pulled her hand away with surprise. No. It doesn't have any life force or consciousness. What you felt are just the echoes of the souls trapped in Kalga, but they are fading away. Lith replied. Then why does it look like a mana core? It doesn't. You're just blinded by its brilliance. Ignore the whales and look deeper. Floria followed his instructions and made another attempt. The white crystal was just filled to the brim with world energy that the cutting process had compressed to its utmost limit. She had mistaken it for a mana core because Floria had never seen such dense energy in an inanimate object and because the nature of the white crystal focused the world energy, giving it a spherical form. Meanwhile, in the living room, Freya and Quilla didn't know what to do. An abomination. I'm already having trouble dating an emperor beast and Camilla didn't even flinch in front of an abomination. Quilla said, Yeah, she must have gone through a lot before meeting Lith to be so decisive. I would have needed at least two glasses of blue phoenix before making my mind. Freya nodded. Are you serious? Dead serious. If I found someone that loved me despite my flaws and that I loved back despite theirs, after going through thick and thin together for three years, I wouldn't break up with them over a minor detail. She shrugged. If you've already made your decision, why are you still here? Because if I left, you'd probably act out of peer pressure. Without a gorgeous, friendly ear, you wouldn't be able to voice your doubts. Freya said, the last time Floria had to talk me into staying friends with Lith after learning that he's a hybrid and now you want me to set aside the fact that he's an abomination like dust under a rug. Is there something wrong with me or with you too? Quilla asked. Discover EU chapters at Novel by Co. Neither. We just have different points of view. To me, the breaking point was learning that Ryman was an emperor beast married to a human woman who had given him children. After a huge bender and fighting side by side with him, I realized that Ryman is a good person and he deserves to be happy. After that, the rest came easy. Why do you think I had no trouble accepting that Lith was a hybrid or swearing alliance to a huge Hydra? Do you think less of Faluel because she's an emperor beast? Of Naurent because a he's a hybrid or of Marth if he decided to date that crazy dryad? No. They are all wonderful people. I don't like that, Rissa, but I've never seen Marth smile that often ever since we left Larul. He's the one who has to put up with her tomfoolery, so as long as he's happy, I'm happy as well. Quilla replied, Then how is this any different? I'm not telling you to trust a random abomination, but to trust Lith who also happens to be part abomination. Quilla tried to reply, but Freya gestured for her to wait. As I see it, Alina gave him his human side just like Mogur gave him his beast side. He told us that he wasn't normal ever since the fourth year of the Academy, and until a couple of days ago, neither we nor he knew what he really was. Now that we got our answer, how does it change our relationship? Quilla froze for a few seconds as she thought back to all the things they had gone through together to how much Lith had suffered when he believed to have lost Protector for good despite having sacrificed so much of his life force in the attempt to save him, to how that sacrifice would sooner or later kill Lith. Then, she remembered all the times that he had stood by her side in her hour of need just because he cared about her. A tear streamed down her eye at the memory of how he didn't hesitate to reveal his hybrid nature to save her in Kula or to give out Solus's secret to save Floria in Feymar. I think you're right, Quilla said after a while. No matter if his base is human, beast, or abomination, Lith is still the same person I've known for years. Thanks for helping me to realize it before I did something I would have regretted my whole life. That's what big sisters are for, little one. Freya ruffled her hair while standing on the tiptoes to recreate the height gap that separated them back at the academy. Stop calling me little one. You know how much I hate that moniker. 
Quilla left the room and the tower warped her in the mines where the rest of the group discussed how the white crystal affected the other gemstones. Freya came in last a few seconds later, noticing that Lith sighed in relief at her sight. He must have been afraid that I would leave the tower without even saying goodbye. She thought while walking in front of him with an embarrassed look on her face. Chapter 1270, Solus's True Power, Part 2 I'm sorry that it took me so long to come here. I want you to know that I never doubted our friendship. I was just scared. All the undead I met until now were bad people, and hearing that you are some kind of undead and an abomination at that overwhelmed me. Freya said. Quilla opened her eyes wide, realizing that Freya had decided to take the fall for their late coming to not make things more awkward between her and Lith. Don't apologize. Being scared is natural. Even I am afraid of myself ever since I almost killed Solus while fighting the puppeteer. Lith hugged her, thankful to Freya just for being still there and for not quivering at his touch. Watch your hands, big guy, or I'll tell Camilla. She chuckled while returning the embrace. By the way, have you decided what you want to do with the hands? Mine or Manadian's? Lith asked, moving one hand on her hip and changing his stance as if he was about to kiss her. The hands of Mina Dion, smartass. Freya said with a chuckle. Then no. The problem is that an imprint cannot be taken back, so unless I give them to someone disposable, it's not like I can kill them the moment I change my mind. It's a big decision. He let Freya go and took the hands of Mina Dion out of his pocket dimension. They looked like thick silver working gloves with one mana crystal of a different color on each fingertip and a sixth in the middle of their backhand. The crystals went from red on the little finger to blue on the thumb. The green gem was replaced by a bright silver, while the gemstone on the backhand was black. They are beautiful. Freya wasn't an awakened, yet she could feel the hair on the back of her head stand up in front of the raw power the hands emitted. Is it me? Or the six gems represent one element each? Doesn't that mean that they are all white crystals of which Mina Dion has amplified the affinity toward a single element to their utmost limit? Floria asked. Indeed. Lith said. It's a work similar to the Sword of Seifel, but meant for crafting rather than fighting. It's actually better. Solas said while assuming her humanoid form and letting her own gloves cover her hands. They all could notice how the relic related to the tower and the hands were almost identical. The only differences were Solus's gloves being white, the gems being positioned on the knuckles, and their number. With just a deep cyan core, Solus could manifest only four mana crystals. She drew in the world energy from the geyser below them and split it into its six elemental components by channeling it through the gloves. The missing gems made the flow of the light, darkness, and fire element thinner, but Solus had no trouble lowering the output of the other elements to make them match. Then, she breathed a spark of her vitality in the six streams and they suddenly merged into a single one of emerald green color. Up Ted Chapters and Enbelbin. Calm. Is that spirit magic? Quilla was flabbergasted. Yes. I've scanned the hands ever since we retrieved them, and even though I didn't imprint them, studying their power core has made me regain this memory about the tower's abilities. I'm now certain that I possess all the abilities of the four relics of Manadian set. I just have to wait until my body fully recovers to master them. Solas said, That's great for you and Lith, but why does the ability to produce spirit magic make the hands better than the Sword of Seifel? Floria asked without bothering to hide the greed in her eyes, just like everyone else in the room. Unless Tyrus's sword has some secret I'm not aware of, only the hands can be used to both craft powerful relics that employ spirit magic and to fuel their master's spells. The only weakness of spirit magic is how mana expensive it is since it relies entirely on the mana core, but with the hands, one just needs to use a bit of life force to turn the elements into their own mana. Solas said. At those words, 
All those who weren't awakened tried to put Solus's theory into practice. Success would mean the ability to use spirit magic, at least for crafting. Conjuring six streams of elemental energy wasn't hard at their level of mastery. Yet only Freya managed to keep them exactly at the same level due to her being equally attuned with all elements. How the heck do you add life force? She asked after trying and failing several times. I don't know. Solus shrugged. I, I just do what we do every time Lith breathes his origin flames. Whatever it is, it must be hard to grasp since not even Kalga's king used spirit magic this way. Her words caused a lot of swearing that only ceased once Lith warped everyone back into the dining room, where hot tea and pastries waited for them. Now that you know what happened in Kalga, I have to tell you what happened here during my absence. He said, aside from Floria, no one remembered who Trine was. No condolences were asked or given since no one cared about his death if not for the pain it caused Alina. The part about Orpal's return and Camilla's parents, however, sent the room into an uproar. Here I thought we had it hard in the fringe. Quilla clenched her cup so hard that if not for its magical nature, she would have crushed it many times already. Do you really think the three events are linked? After being betrayed by the Dewans, Nalrin's mistrustful nature had become even worse, but even to him that hypothesis seemed a bit far-fetched. I really hope that Orpal didn't kill Trine just to get back into the family. Tist aside, as for Camilla's parents, I don't know them well enough to answer your question. Orpal's arrival helps their cause, but not by much. Involving themselves with him is a double-edged sword. It allows them to ride his second-chance bullshit, but if their business relationship gets exposed, they'll lose even Zinnia's trust. Call me crazy, but I don't believe that Tryon killed himself. Floria said, Even after what he did to me, I kept an eye on him because he was your brother. Sure, he was green with envy and would WHINE about his family with whoever was willing to lend him an ear, but he loved his job. The army was his new family, and he had lots of friends. Before my discharge, I heard that he was about to get promoted. That coupled with the fact that he died months after you became an archmage instead that immediately after sounds suspicious to me. Camilla is already looking into it, but at this point, maybe it's better if I ask Journey for help as well. Lith pondered Floria's words, feeling his paranoia sense tingling more and more. Please, you know how my mother works. She probably already has a folder thicker than my arm about everyone involved. I bet that if she found anything suspicious, she would already be at your doorstep. Floria said with a sneer, You are probably right, but I'll ask her anyway, just to stay on the safe side. Lith nodded, 